Hello, I'm Jan Oberg, the director of the Transnational Foundation for Peace and Future Research in Lund, Sweden. And today I'm going to speak a little bit about why NATO is obsolete, you know, as President Trump said. But of course he disagrees very quickly with himself. But I stick to my view that NATO is obsolete. It's now the North Atlantic Treaty outdated or obsolete. And here are some arguments why. First of all, there must be something wrong. NATO is 68 years old. And if you look at the world today, with all its wars, particularly in the Middle East, the tension with Russia, the Ukraine problem, North Korea, I'm not saying NATO is the only reason for that, but if for 68 years you have said that you can create peace and you haven't managed there's something wrong. And perhaps it's the mantra. The mantra has been, dear taxpayers, pay us and we'll get some weapons and we will give you three things. This is a NATO mantra. Security, stability and peace. Now there is no security, stability and peace in the world. Not even in the area where NATO countries are involved. So there must be something wrong, fundamentally wrong. Then there is a philosophy. The philosophy is that weapons, predominantly, can solve the world's problems. Give us more and we will solve more problems. Weapons, military, is an outdated means where we need instead to learn conflict resolution conflict analysis, diagnosis, prognosis, treatment, nonviolent ways of dealing with each other's problems. There will always be problems called conflicts and conflicts can be something we start at least with a dialogue about. So we are in for human security, global security, not national military security. NATO is updated on that point too. Then there is the mission. The problem is that NATO is looking for a mission. It doesn't have one because in 89, the reason it existed disappeared, namely the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact disappeared, dissolved completely. That was the raison d'etre of NATO. We are there because they are there. Instead of pulling down and doing the same with NATO and say it's no longer needed, triumphalistically the West said let's expand as much as we can and that started with Clinton in 1990 four in Georgia against all the promises we had given Gorbachev about not expanding NATO an inch. That's the background to why we have a conflict today in Ukraine, but that's a longer story than I can take here. The mission we instead had was to go into areas that were not NATO and that started with Yugoslavia. It was called out of area operations. It should never have been done that way. We should not have contributed, used NATO to split. Uh, countries out uh, of Yugoslavia and create an independent Kosovo by NATO bombings without a UN mandate. So instead of being a defensive alliance, one for all, all for one, paragraph five of NATO, it became an out of area operation, going anywhere, doing the wrong things with an outdated mandate and thinking. Then there is the nuclear weapons. NATO is a nuclear based alliance and it keeps the right to be the first to use nuclear weapons also against the conventional attack. Now, this is totally outdated, it's uncivilized. There is no political means for which, or goals for which you can use justifiably, morally, nuclear weapons, which will kill millions and millions of people if used. The whole point here is that we have now, at this, these very months, we have 130 countries who are sitting drafting a treaty about how to illegalize, how to criminalize, how to make nuclear weapons illegal, how to ban the bomb. With the exception of Holland, all the NATO countries have been told not to participate in this. This is the way of the world. This is the way of civilization and NATO is behind the curve, way behind the curve in sticking to nuclear weapons. It should lead the road to a nuclear free world if it was for peace, stability and security. Then there's the 
strange idea. We were always told that balance was a good thing for peace. What NATO now builds on is superiority. NATO's 28, actually very soon 29, with little Montenegro, a deeply corrupt state. What it builds on now is superiority. It has 12 times more military expenditures than the Russia that they now scream and shout about is a big new threat. During the old Cold War, the Warsaw Pact was 65-75% of, of NATO's military expenditures, a much larger threat. Let's say 10 times larger a threat than it is today, and still we're hearing all this. Russia is a terrible threat. It's all theology, and you shouldn't listen to it. Then there is terror. Officially, <clears throat> NATO is fighting terrorism, participating in the global war on terror. We have terror for a reason. NATO never dared to discuss why there are terrorists who hate the West. But that said, NATO members are supporting terrorism. The United States, Turkey in particular, Britain and France have all participated the last six years in supporting, weaponizing the terrorists, for instance in Syria, to just one, mention one place. And Mr. Trump comes straight from Saudi Arabia, the largest funder of those terrorists, such as Al-Qaeda, ISIS, etc., and support them philosophically. Then there is the ethics. Why shall we keep on paying to an alliance that builds on the fundamental philosophy that it's okay to kill people if necessary. Wouldn't it be better to have an alliance which said it's wrong to kill and we're going to do it differently to be in line with the future demands of humanity. Humanity is sick and tired of war and killing and justifications for this military, industrial, media, academic complex that is the only beneficiary of NATO today. And finally, there is the problem that NATO stands in the way of alternatives. With $900 billion going into this machinery, not creating security, stability and peace. There is no money, resources, thinking, research institutes that can match as with a civilian way of treating conflicts. Who can put disarmament on the agenda? Who can put a more peaceful world on the agenda? Who can give the intellectual tools and train the people to do this? So if you ask me, NATO is obsolete. NATO is an indefensible construction belonging to the past. And we need something completely new, a much stronger OSCE, a much stronger European security structure, a new cooperation with the Middle East, and a much stronger United Nations to keep the peace. And we need somebody who does not defy international law as NATO members consistently do, but who respect international law. If NATO could do all that, I'm not against NATO, but there's no sign that it does. It's indefensible, outdated, and it should go. Thank you very much for your attention.